I see the sign. Hello, Marcelo. Hello, Martin. Oh, I okay. I, I can see that your microphone works and everything works, so that's great. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've been with us this morning. We had some fun problems. Um, which you which you get if you want to do a stream for twenty four hours. So uh, I I've seen you in there as the fast API expert and people who don't know you, you're the maintainer of Starlet and UVCorn. So basically everything fast API touches and is fast is your job, right? <laughs> uh, I help in, yeah, I help maintaining those packages and I've also been helping a lot in the fast API community for some yeah. time now. I love fast API and I'm um, actually just uh, in the process of converting a soap U, um, API to fast API. So I will be really paying attention to what you have to say about performance tips, because that's something that people don't really know much about. So I'm going to put your slides on the screen and hope that you have a good presentation. Good. Thank you, Martin. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about, so uh, my name is Marcelo and today my, the topic of my talk will be performance tips with the Fast API expert. I'm going to tell you well, a bit about myself, which Martin just introduced me. Uh, but yeah, I am uh, considered a Fast API expert. I've been helping the community for more than two years now, uh, mainly helping issues uh, with the Discord server, uh, also code contributions. And besides that, I am uh, a maintainer of YouthCorn and Starlet. YouthCorn is uh, a web server uh, which runs applications uh, like FastAPI and also different uh, applications that follow the same interface as FastAPI follows, uh, which would be ASCII. And Starlet is a web framework that uh, it's basically the web part of a fast API. So fast API inherits the Starlet main class and it, it uh, makes use of that. Uh, so this talk, uh, it's gonna be about performance. Uh, it's gonna be mainly mentioning things that you can do to improve the performance of your application. Uh, it's gonna be a bit about uh, server side, about the application side itself and the thing is that I'm going to compare uh, a base application uh, with several improvements that can be done. Uh, a, a takeaway that you should have, uh, that you should, you should get from this talk, uh, it's more about the things that can improve your application more than uh, for how much that improvement, uh, like what's the benefit, how, how much it is beneficial for your application. I, I just want to, to tell you that this is beneficial, not uh, the amount of it. Um, and you're gonna see why, why I'm mentioning this. So uh, here we have a simple fast API application. It doesn't have, uh, it's not very complex. And all our study here will be done around this application. So, uh, our, the benchmarks that I've performed are also uh, on this application and on the, on the ones that you're going to see soon. Uh, but then you, you need to be aware that this is a very specific uh, endpoint. Uh, so it's not a real case uh, scenario. So I'm not performing a load test on several endpoints based on users. And I'm using low cost to, to do the, the, the load testing and the, the benchmarks, but uh, it's just on this kind of application. So the results might differ on different uh, kinds of applications. And, and this is the one that you're going to use it. So as we see, this is a fast API application. On line six, we are just instantiating the fast API application. <laughs> and on line nine, we have the response model. Uh, which is a list of output. The output on line three and four, uh, so the line three is the data that I've generated for this specific uh, study. And on line four, we have the Pydentic model that's going to be used to validate our data. Okay, on line 11, uh, this is kind of something that I've seen a lot, uh, which is basically people that try to uh, create the Pydentic model within the body of the of the endpoint, the endpoint function. Uh, we're gonna see at some point this is not needed, but I put it here to see how how it improves the performance when we remove it. So let's go. 
uh, also, yeah, the, I've generated the, the JSON, the output of the data from the JSON generator.com. And to create the Pydentic model, I've used the JSON to Pydentic uh, web page that gets the JSON and you can convert it to Python code, uh, which is uh, the Pydentic models. Uh, as for those numbers that you see on the screen, uh, I've run low cost and they gave me uh, some numbers. Those are the numbers that I got. You don't need to be focused on, on those numbers. We're going to see how much things improve. And, and I'm just going to prove it that it improves. So you just need to be aware that I'm going to repeat this, those numbers uh, along to, to this talk. Uh, yeah, the first improvement that you need to do. So some improvements that I'm going to mention, they are kind of uh, maybe obvious if you read some of the documentation of FastAPI or Youthcorn or Starlet. Uh, but I'm going to mention them at the beginning. So maybe if, if you are aware that you need to do this, maybe you don't are aware why you need to do it. So uh, on this case, we have UVLoop, uh, which is in a, an event loop implementation that is faster than the start that the one that we have on the standard library uh, of AsyncIO. Uh, so to benefit from, from like using it, uh, we have an improvement of 12% considering the application that we saw at the beginning. Uh, it's a good improvement, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, just take 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 it as a, the, not the number, as I said, but that it actually improves the, the performance of the application. Also, uh, to have that on your uh, application, at, on, on you just need to install UVLOOP. You don't need to change anything on the on the UFCorn command or in the fast API application, you just need to install it. If it's installed, uh, UFCorn is going to uh, infer that, it's going to find it, and it's going to use it. So if you just have it installed, then it's going to benefit from us. Another benefit uh, is using the HTTP tools, uh, which is an HTTP. Uh, so we use two packages to in, uh, in UFCorn to make the HTTP implementation. So everything that is related to HTTP is handled by the parsing and stuff. It's really it's done by two packages, either H11 or uh, HTTP tools. By default, the UFCorn uses H11, which is the implementation is a bit slower than the HTTP tools. Uh, and HTTP tools itself, it's a Python binding for the Node.js HTTP parser. So Node.js uses this parser that's called LLHTP, and we use uh, uh, and, and HTTP tools is a binding for that. With this, we have 10% uh, of improvement. But again, it's just that that is an improvement. And to benefit from this, you just need to install the HTTP tools. Uh, the same idea as the UV loop. So if you have it uh, on the, the environment, uh, UVCorn can infer that it's there, can find it, and can use it. And also, uh, there is a way to install those two without having to install this separately. So if you do uh, pip install UVCorn with uh, square brackets and then standard, you're going to find it. You can also find more about this on the uh, documentation of UVCorn. Uh, okay, now start stuff that people are not aware. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, the bigger thread pool, what I called. So if we see this application uh, from line, uh, the beginning, the imports and the from line 13 to the end are the same as the one before. But we are just including this startup uh, uh, function, right? And OK, so if you have, like as we have in line 17, we have an endpoint that is not async. So uh, that means that Starlet, from underneath, it's going to use uh, a thread pool, uh, which in, in, in NIO, it's called the capacity limiter. Well, the capacity limiter actually uh, tells you how many threads can you use, which um, we are going to change the number of them that we can use. By default, it can, 40 can be used, like 40, <laughs> 40 can be used. So that's quite limiting. And sometimes you want to use more than that. And this is what is happening here. So on line 9, uh, it might sound a bit confusing, but we are just getting this default 
capacity limiter that tells you how many uh, threads can you use. And on line 10, we are just changing this number. So we are going to be able to use a thousand threads here. Uh, and, and that's the only thing that is happening here. Uh, as we have more to use, uh, the application also improves a bit the, the, the how many requests can I process for, for the time that I perform the, the load testing. Uh, yes, you can find more about this on a specific issue on, on Starlet. Uh, it is not documented properly on maybe none of the frameworks that uh, uh, I've mentioned on this talk, but you can also find this uh, on any I.O. documentation. Uh, it's written stuff uh, related to what I just said. You just look for a capacity limiter and you're going to find more information about it. Uh, okay, so now let's go to the maybe obvious, uh, but this, if you use async, uh, the application is also going to, to improve uh, in, in the benchmark that we are proposing here. So on this, this is the same application that we saw at the beginning with the change that on line 10, we are going to, to put it async. Uh, we are not performing any any operation that requires a sync there, but the fact that we are using it makes us not use the, the threads from the executor. So it's gonna improve uh, a bit the performance anyway. And yeah, as we can see, there was a 15% of, around 15% of improvement on this kind of application. And it was good, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's it. Another thing, that uh, can improve the performance is the, so as we saw at the beginning, and as I mentioned, maybe most of the people don't do that, but as I've seen it, I, I put it there, uh, which is the line 11 that is changing. Here, uh, we have the output uh, that is uh, being returned and the response without the that uh, generator, that uh, the, the least comprehension that we had there. Uh, so here, as there is no duplication of, gener of uh, creation of the pydentic objects, then we have an improvement of performance, which is a lot. Uh, but also at this point, you need to be aware of kind of that this application, if you notice, it's kind of focusing on the validation. What is performing more work is actually the validation. So um, it's kind of normal that we have a better improvement if you are removing this duplication of, of validation. Uh, then we can have uh, strategies to also improve uh, uh, other stuff. <laughs> uh, in on this case, we have the using another library for the JSON serialization. So instead of using the standard library, uh, we'd like to use uh, another library. By default, uh, FastAPI uses the JSON response without the OR at the beginning. It's not written on the screen, but it's the one that uses the JSON library from the standard library. Yes, it's JSON package from, yeah. And this one that we're seeing on, in this, on the screen, on line two, is importing the OR JSON the response uh, that uses the OR JSON uh, package, which is a bit faster. And uh, as you see, it's the same application as the one that were before. Uh, actually, there is on line 11, it's a sync, and I am also returning the output. But uh, <laughs> I assure you that the benchmarks were uh, with the previous application that we saw at the beginning uh, with the dev home and also the the generator. I, I think I just changed it at some point. Uh, but yeah, so the results are also, uh, th there's a lot more difference than, than the others that were showed, presented before. So it is an improvement that you can try. Uh, also, I mean, I've mentioned uh, by now some improvements and I also tried to mention that uh, those are very specific to the application that I have in hands. So do not take those numbers again as a rule. Uh, try those on your application and you can also do the same load testing and see uh, how good, uh, they, how, how much they improve uh, the performance of uh, what you have. Another thing that 
I do not recommend. <laughs> uh, it's do not using the validation from uh, FastAPI. So uh, as you see on line eight, we have the app uh, dot get there, and we don't have a response model, right? If you don't have a response model, you cannot validate the output of the data, which means that uh, you're not going to well, lose time uh, uh, with that. And then you get a bit more performance. And you're going to see that it's a lot better. <laughs> but also, you need to be aware that this is kind of, well, this is a feature of FastAPI. Data validation is one of the features that is mentioned. And you are not going to be using the 100%. You're gonna, you are not going to be extracting 100% of the framework if you don't use this feature. But if you have some kind of endpoint that you need it, like you have the whole application and you need one endpoint to have a better performance than the others, and you are sure that your data is, well, being sure it's kind of complicated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this can improve the, the performance of your, at least of the endpoint of interest. And the numbers are a bit uh, high. Uh, because mainly, as I said, the, what this endpoint is doing is mainly doing uh, creating the PyDentic object. So it's kind of normal that we are, uh, like most of the work is, is this. So it's kind of normal that we see this huge improvement. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So another thing that you can do to improve the performance of your application that I don't recommend is to remove the access logging. <laughs> so if you remove the access logs uh, using this command, uh, the application name, the application path, and then the application variable name, and use no access log, you are not able to see the HTTP logs anymore. And then your application also improves uh, a bit. A bit. <laughs> and yeah. So. Let's go to some bonuses. So the first one that I want to talk, it's about the, the middlewares, how you create middlewares in FastAPI and Starlet, uh, which is using uh, a decorator, and then you create the middleware. Uh, the thing is that normally, the way that is uh, in the documentation of FastAPI, it's in a way that is not the most performant way. Uh, but it is it is easier to do it with that. Uh, the thing is that there are two ways of doing this. One way is using this base HTTP middleware, which is doing the decorator. Uh, those are analogous here. And using an, a pure ASCII middleware. A pure ASCII middleware is uh, creating kind of a, an ASCII application uh, that you can use in blocks with other applications, and they work as a middleware. Uh, we're gonna kind of we're gonna see it uh, right now, but uh, I'm sorry if that's uh, kind of a bit complex. But I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna provide you ways to to get a bit more knowledge about this subject. So here we have the fast API application. So on line seven, we have app dot middleware HTTP, which means that we are going to create a middleware that works on uh, HTTP kind of events. There are three kinds of events. One would be HTTP, the other web sockets, and the other lifespan. Lifespan uh, are the ones that are for a startup and shutdown uh, events. So yeah, on line eight, we have just uh, the signature with the request and call next as parameters. The request is the request that's arriving, and the call next is a way to it's a it's a it's a callable uh, to call uh, what comes next. And what comes next here would be either uh, the next middleware that is on the sequence, so uh, can be another middleware, or it can be the, the endpoint itself. So on line nine, we call uh, for example the the home endpoint that we were calling before, and on line line nine we receive that response, and on line ten we add the header uh, x potato with the value being banana. And then, uh, and then we, we give it back the response to the client. Now, <laughs> uh, OK, if 
you haven't seen some kind of this stuff, uh, this is not that complicated. I'm gonna explain a bit. I hope I can achieve make it like this easier than what it looks like. But uh, on line 24th, like the last one, you can see that we are adding this middleware. So this middleware, uh, the add potato header middleware, is as I said uh, a way to put it together with the fast with the application like in a block and it runs kind of after and before depending on how you you create the middleware it's the same as we saw before but uh following the ascii interface uh explicitly i'd say uh because the base HTTP middleware also follows uh, the ascii of course but uh it makes it easier for the user so you are not aware that this is actually happening happening underneath so this is a, a pure uh, way of creating a middleware. So on line 10, uh, sorry, on line 9, we see scope, receive, and send. This is the, the signature of how an ASCII application, ASCII middleware, uh, looks like. We have the scope that has uh, contains the information about the connection. We have the receive and send that are uh, callables to interact with the server. On line 10, we are making sure that we have the H type of, uh, of, of, uh, of connection. So instead of being WebSockets uh, or Lifespan, uh, we're going to make sure that it's HTTP. So if it's not, we're going to call the next part of the block. So it goes directly to the to the our fast API application, and it doesn't uh, run the, the middleware itself. Like it runs until there. On line 13, we're defining another send with uh, another send method that we're going to use it to wrap the send method to interact with the server. So on line 14, we are just checking if the message is an HTTP response start. You can read more about what kind of messages are available on the SGREF documentation. But there, uh, we're just making sure that this is the, the message that we want. And on this message, we have the headers. So on line 15 and 16, I'm adding the X potato header with the value banana. And then on line 20, I'm just using that to, to, to run uh, the application. That's it. I hope it was not that complicated. But again, uh, as we saw in the comments here, uh, this is a comment for an uh, GitHub issue on Starlet that uh, this, this reporter is saying that it improved on, at least on the application that the, uh, they run, that it was twice faster on, on their machine. So this is something that you can also try and see how it improves the performance of your application. Uh, if you think this is too complex to understand, and I maybe spoke stuff that doesn't make much sense now, you can also read more about it on the Starlet documentation. Uh, you just search for ASCII Pure Middleware on the Starlet Middleware page, and then you can find it. Uh, Florimon, uh, one of the maintainers of Starlet Grid, uh, did a great job there writing it down. And the last tip that I'm going to give that he didn't make much sense uh, here because it really depends on the kind of application that you have. It's the it's compressing the responses before sending back to the client. Uh, so one way to do this is using, for example, the gzip middleware. And here. Uh, I mean, I didn't put the benchmarks here of how it performs because on my specific application, it didn't have any improvement. So I would just not put it here. So, uh, but please try it on, on yours. Uh, it will likely uh, make uh, a difference. Uh, it's just that my specific case didn't have it. So I didn't put the benchmarks here. But please try it out. And that's it. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to. And I am Clodex on GitHub and Marcelo Tlesinski at LinkedIn. Thank you. Ah, I cannot hear. Hold, hold on. Well, uh, <laughs> ah, OK, that's right. why. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, you, cannot, it, you cannot see me. <laughs> Hold I on. cannot. I cannot see. It's quite. It's getting quite dark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <But well>. <laughs> now that that was a an impressive list of tips, especially at the beginning, that you just have to install a few things, and then suddenly, uh, fast API will get faster. Um, you mentioned it quickly that you're using Locust to test the speed. Uh, mm. Is that correct? 
Was yes. that for the examples? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you also recommend other tools that you could use to test the speed? Mm, WRT, people use it a lot. Uh, okay. Kind of load test and benchmark to the results. Um, there are some new tools that I've tried, but I don't recall the names. <laughs> uh, okay. I, may, well, I mainly use Lucas. So. Yeah, so that's your your vote goes to that tool to if you want to check the performance of your fast API. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, in another, since we still have a little bit of time, like if anybody else has a question, you can always ask questions. So um, that is uh, that's totally an option uh, if you're not totally stumped by what you've seen. Um, you also show you showed the middleware. Um, the, this middleware is coming before the Pydantic validation, right? So uh, uh, that's a question, by the way. Mm, at the point oh, that I show you, so uh, at the point that I show you, it's actually after. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you can you can so you have the kind of the the fast API the endpoint in the middle. So you have the middleware that's kind of wrapping it. So it runs something, but I didn't perform anything before the application. I just add the headers after. So if okay. you have this bot that performs and then yeah. So do you is there also a way to perform something before the uh, validation happens? Mm, uh, but then you you would do it on the endpoint function, no? Yeah, base, basically uh, the, 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 the question is like if you have fast API endpoints and you give them to people who are very unflexible and they will send you in broken ah. JSON. Uh, and they are a government agency, so they don't care. <laughs> so I, I had this like when working with um, Moroccan authorities. <laughs> and so it's, it, it's also interesting to see like, where can you have like a middleware that allows you to fix things before they go into fast API? Mm, I mean, I think if I got it right, uh, what I would do was actually not to I, I would not allow Fast API to perform the validation. I would perform it myself. So oh. uh, if you if you if you get uh, I show you OR JSON response. Yes. But if you get I mean if you can use that if you explicitly return that uh, if you do return OR JSON response with the data inside then Fast API is not going to use the the validation. So you can actually validate yourself in, in that specific case. Okay. Good. Yeah, I don't want to, to, to carry on this special case for too long. It's just to say, okay, you say it's possible. And then that's, <laughs> that's, it. yeah, I was I was always worried about like, is Pydantic taking up too much of the time? Because it uh, it does uh, do a lot of things. Yeah, but I mean, uh, again, the, the, the end point that I tried here was specific, like the, the more of the work was basically validating the the data. So it's kind of normal that when I removed the validation, we saw a big uh, improvement there. A real endpoint like would not have only that; would have uh, database calls and other stuff. Yeah, there would there would also be more calls. That's that's correct. So <laughs> pro probably it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, and the GSIP uh, thing, of course, uh, normally you would have something in front of your fast API, like maybe an nginx. Uh, or a another web server, so that wouldn't that do the compression then before something goes out. So, is that uh, it, it, did you consider that when you uh, did that test, so that uh, it could be somewhere on the way or? Uh, well, on, on my study, I only used uh, those three tools. Like you have fast API, Yubcorn, and the packages that are around, and then uh, mm -hmm. I didn't use any other layer. So okay. Yeah, well, uh, let's see if we have any other questions in there. But uh, it, it was really good to think about this and to think about how you can speed up your fast API <laughs> in production. Uh, of course, uh, and of course, most people like, like for example, uh, I also like the documentation part of fast API a lot. Uh, it's like m m one of the reasons why I think it's the obvious choice to do APIs. <laughs> But of course, yep. you have to trust. You have to trust it in the long run if you want to put a, <laughs> a, a lot. Yes, you if you want to put a lot of loads on it. Uh -huh. So, um, well, thanks for taking the time to show all this to us, and I hope to meet you again at some other conference soon. Cool. Yeah. Bye. So, thank you. 
Okay, and that closes uh, the second block we have. So you have now a chance for a one hour break where you can have some tea and biscuits or whatever uh, you uh, like to enjoy at this stage.